Hi friends, today we are going to see a new type of realization uh, in IIR structures and the name of that realization is cascade realization and parallel realization. So we have uh, two basic uh, sub realizations in uh, IIR structure, one we call as cascade and the other one is called as parallel. Now, First, we need to understand what is the need of actually going for cascade and parallel realization is if suppose the transfer function is huge enough, if the system is very complicated and very big, then it is become very cumbersome to make a, a direct uh, uh, structure of it because if you make a direct structure of it, it will be too much complicated. Uh, uh, the links will be too much uh, confusing. So what we do is uh, we realize such structures or such systems uh, by realizing uh, or dividing a big complicated system into smaller subsystems. So I will have a complicated system called H of Z. Then I will break that system into parts. Okay, or we say modules. And then each module we will realize, let's say H1 of Z, h2 of z, h3 of z and so on let's say h n of z. So I have a complicated system h of z to whom I have divided into sub or modules or subsystems and I will then arrange that subsystems either in cascade form or parallel form to give the h of z. So the arrangement of a subsystems transfer function or the arrangement of subsystems is done either using cascade form or parallel form. And this individual system which is smaller enough or the individual module which is, which is handleable enough will be realized either using direct form 1 or direct form 2. Designer preference will be direct form 2 because it gives me canonic structures. So, basically, for cascade structures, the H of Z will have subsystems H1 of Z, H2 of Z, and so on and so forth. Let's say H of N of Z. They all will be cascaded. Matlab, their products will be taken. Okay. So I will product H1 of Z with H2 of Z, then H3 of Z and so on and so forth. The product will go up to H of N. So they, there will be one system. After that, there will be second system. After that, there will be third system. So the arrangement will be, I will have H1 of Z. The output of H1 of Z will be given to H2 of Z. The output of H2 of Z will be given to H3 of Z and so on so forth. The last will be H N of Z. And then this will be my X of N and this will be my Y of N. And this whole system will be H of Z. So I will have a complicated system to which I will divide into smaller subsystems and I will attach one system after the other. This form of arrangement of subsystems is called as a cascade realization or cascade form. An individual system will be realized or will be drawn using either direct form 1 or direct form 2. This is about cascade. Now for parallel, the same concept but here the subsystems will be added. So I will have H1 of Z added with H2 of Z added to H3 of Z and so and so forth added to H N of Z. Okay. So how will I draw it? I will have H1 of Z. Then I will have H2 of Z. Then I will have let's say H3 of Z and so on and so forth till let's say h n of z they all will be excited through one input but their outputs will be added 
so i will add let's say h1 and h2 x output is added let's say with h3 and finally i will add this final term okay and this will be my y of n some people draw it like this or some might draw it in a way in different fashion which we normally use because it is simpler to draw so we will have let's say three blocks of subsystems all will be excited using one input and output will be added now the addition is normally shown using a summing block we can show like this also so this one this one and this one so this is my y of n and this will be my x of n so this is my parallel realization so in parallel the subsystems will be added the output of subsystems will be added in cascade output of first subsystem will be given as an input of second subsystem and so on and so forth we are going on attaching the stages of subsystem to create the whole big system whereas here we have uh, individual subsystems and their outputs are added together to form the complete uh, big system so it is just an arrangement of subsystems uh, is done using uh, cascade form and uh, parallel form individual subsystem i repeat again the individual subsystem which is h1 of z h2 of z h3 of z and so on and so forth will be realized using direct form 1 or direct form 2 but again as a choice we will always go with direct form 2 so we will have either cascade form or parallel form and then in that cascade and parallel form when the subsystems are divided i will design that sub individual subsystem using direct form 1 or direct form 2 so this is how cascade and parallel forms exist in iir forms hi friends today we are going to see uh, how to design a cascade and parallel structures of iir filters let us take a problem the problem states that you have to obtain a real uh, a parallel and a cascade form of realization of a given transfer function and the transfer function is h of z equals to 1 minus z inverse upon 1 minus 0.2 z raised to minus 1 minus 0.15 z raised to minus 2 okay now they have mentioned that you have to use cascade and parallel so you cannot use direct form 1 direct form 2 directly over here now for cascade form let us start with cascade in cascade form i will divide by h of z as h1 of z into h2 of z and so on so forth right so i can divide that system into n number of subsystems okay but here let us uh you can divide the subsystems into two subsystems also one is the numerator uh, the numerator subsystem alone and the denominator subsystem but then again you can divide the denominator subsystem so i will directly start with uh division of the denominator we can see that the denominator is a second order polynomial okay so let us go with the solution now so i started with case 1 which is cascade so let's say this is case 1 this cascade form and let us start its solution so for case 1 uh that is cascade form let us divide we see that it's a polynomial of order Two, so it will have two roots. Let us calculate the roots. So the roots of this equation, okay? So write like this. The roots of denominator polynomial are uh, there will be two roots, and the roots are. 
point five comma minus point three. So this uh, roots of this will be point five and minus point three. You see that it gives me point one five minus, and if you add them, you'll get minus point. Okay. So that are the roots of the equation, and if you substitute them, you will get h of z as equal to one minus z inverse. Divided by the method that I will use will be one minus point five z raised to minus one, and here it will be one plus point three z inverse. Now, those who are uh, those who don't know directly represent in negative indexes of z, you can convert it into positive index of z, and then convert to negative index of z. So let us. Uh, let us add one more step to it and do one problem with converting uh, it to positive index of z and then converting to negative index of z now with respect to positive index of z the polynomial will be z square okay minus 0.2z minus 0.15 now how i get this you have this polynomial multiply the whole polynomial with z square so what you will get over here z square Z raised to minus one stands for one by Z. So Z square multiplied by, divided by Z will give me Z back. So this will be point two Z, and this will be point one five divided by uh, multiplied by Z square and divided by Z square. So it will be nothing over here. So one over here, Z over here, and Z square over. Here. Then find the roots. Once you get the roots, the roots are Z equals to point five comma minus point three. Then you will write the equation back in terms of roots. So you will get z minus 0.5 and z plus 0.3. This when you multiply, you will get this. Correct. So that is a solution of the equation. So this is a polynomial. This is a solution. Now I want to write in terms of z inverse. To write in terms of z inverse, I will pull out z common. So when I pull out z common, I will get z raised to minus uh, z common. Here I am pulling out z common. So this will be z. This will be one minus 0.5 divided by z because there was no z over here. And this will be uh, I pull z again out from here. So I'll write first like this: one plus 0.3 by z. So there will be z again. So this will give me z raised to plus two. So that is z square. And here. It will be one minus. I can write one by uh, one by z as z inverse. Correct. So this is how we write the uh, negative indexes of z. Okay. So whenever you are you are supposed to write negative index of z, you can uh, use this methodology. So. so that's how we received this terms okay then moving ahead once you have received this now what i can do is i can have three subsystems one is only numerator one is first denominator term and second one is the this one so there are three sub subsystems or you can have two subsystems let us go with two subsystems first subsystem i take as 1 minus z inverse upon 1 minus 0.5 z raised to minus 1 into second subsystem i take as 1 upon 1 plus 0.3 z raised to minus 1 nothing wrong nothing wrong in having this as a subsystem okay so you can also have One upon one minus point five z inverse into one minus z inverse upon one plus point three z inverse. So there is nothing wrong in that also. So any combination you can make. I have made this combination. Let us realize now. This becomes my what? This is my h one of z, and this is my h two of z. Now I will have h one of z into h two of z, which will give me h one z. So I have divided them into two subsystems, and uh, I have a product in between them. That is a cascade form. So let us realize them. To realize again, 
I will use direct form one. So let's go to next step. Realizing, realizing uh, subsystems, subsystems. So I'll be realizing subsystems. So for the realization of the subsystems, I'll be using uh, direct form two. So using, let's say, direct form two. Okay. So h one of z is equal to what? Is one minus z inverse upon one minus 0.5 z raised to minus one. Okay. And h two of z is equal to one upon one plus 0.3 z inverse. Okay. Now let us realize using the df two. This will be again. I mean, what is the degree of numerator? What is the highest degree? It is one. So I will have only one delay block. Is z inverse. Now I have z inverse in the numerator also. Z inverse in the denominator also. So I will pull out two arms after z inverse block. Okay. Now uh, with this, with the feedback, the coefficient is minus 0.5. So I will write plus 0.5. Going ahead, I have here minus one, so I'll put minus one. Put an adder block here. Put an adder block here. Okay, is one one. Okay, so this is my h one of z, which is direct form. Oh. Let us go and design uh, or realize direct form two. So direct form two, I have one delay block. Right? I don't have any z inverse in the numerator. It is there only in the denominator. Now we have to go back because there is only z inverse associated in the denominator. So I will go back. Is there anything in the numerator? No. So there is no limb coming out from here. Here it is plus 0.3. I will write it as minus 0.3 because I need to flip the signs. An addition block and connect them together. Here it goes out. Correct. Now this comes in. Now we know that in cascade form. The output of the first system becomes the input of the second subsystem, right? So, who is the output of the first subsystem? This one. Who is the input of the subsystem? This one. So, what we need to do? We need to just connect them. That's all. So, this is what this is what a cascade form realization is all about. So, we have. Uh, to divide the subsystem and then attach them together to give me a cascade form. So this is so simple. So we have to just divide the subsystems in a given uh, format, or you decide the format, and then you realize individual system using direct form two, and then attach them. That is a direct form two structure. So this becomes coming the input. This goes as a output. So that is a direct form. Uh, one uh, cascade form structure. Okay, thank you.